Hey guys, I would like to warn you in advance for the, obviously the lightning is not all that great, so I am so so sorry about that, but I tried my best honestly and yeah, I was just gonna have to go with it. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is a very very exciting video. I'm so excited to be even filming this video. So a lot of my channel has to do about my lifestyle, going to college, what I do, like lifestyle basically. But I am actually, there's more to me than I'm on. I love books. So that's what today's video is about. It's about books. It's about my TBR list to be exact. And I have like a bunch of books that are new and old that I have in front of me right now that I'm looking at. We are actually going to start with the first book and it's the book that I am reading currently. So one by one and we'll get there. I hope you guys enjoy this video as much as I enjoy it. making it for you guys. I also have my Sprite in here because I am thirsty. So please do yourself a favor, grab a snack, grab a drink, settle down, get comfortable. This is about to be a very, very long video. So as I have said, <clears throat> sorry. So as I have said, there's two books that I'm currently reading, but because of my studying, I don't have time to read, but these two, I'm reading them. So the long time read is Bridgerton, the Vice Count who loved me. So if you guys have seen the Bridgerton show, you will know that this, is actually based the show is based on the book there's a lot in the books that they don't put in the show but actually i love it the same uh i'm still like halfway through this literally like uh i'm slowly reading this because i don't i just want to get engaged in it but actually this is, has been on my tbr for a while since i read the duke and i which i finished in like a few days but this had been a harder read because i'm studying and everything so this is the first book that i'm actually currently reading the next book is death utopia now this is a biography and actually i'm sorry it's a memoir and a love letter to a way of life so if you guys know this guy he's actually appeared on switched at birth if you watched it but he's actually deaf in real life. So this is his perspective, the way he goes through life as a deaf person. Now, I really love this book so far and I only started it. So, you know, like I have a lot to go, but I love it so far. The way he explains things, the way that he makes you understand what it's like to be a deaf person and like everything. It's just, it's amazing. I love it. I would definitely recommend if you're going into audiology or speech language therapy field, especially as a college student, I recommend you get in this book because it can really, really help touch your perspective about deaf people, the deaf community, what it's like to be deaf for a person. I think this book is very, very amazing to do that. So keeping it on the Bridgerton theme book, I have an offer from a gentleman. Now this is, same. it talks about the Bridgerton books. I'm sorry, I didn't explain this earlier, but the Bridgerton books actually talk about each of the Bridgerton siblings. But I believe, oh yeah, it's not in order of the alphabetical name, but this book, an offer from a gentleman talks about, which book is this? So this is Benedict's story. So you know, there's Anthony, Benedict, Benedict, Colin, and Gregory. So Benedict is the older and the middle child. He's the older son and the middle child of the family. So this talked about his romance. So keeping it in theme with this, I also have To Sir Philip with Love. So this is a Louise story, which I am so, so excited to actually read. Actually, both of these books have been on my TBR since I picked up The Viscount and Love Me. But then I went away this summer and I came back and I found out they're printing it out in a larger print. Which is amazing, but I wasn't going to pay $12 for the print, the large print. 
So instead, I went to this new store called Moji Bookstore, which is amazing. I had, I mentioned it in my last video, my last vlog. This place, it was like, both of these in large print is $8.99. It's really a bargain. It's a good bargain. But yeah, these two are on my TBR. I'm going to read an offer from a gentleman and then I'm going to read Eloise. I don't really care about Colin and Penelope. I'm sorry, but these two stories actually really struck me and made me want to read them. Just in advance a little bit, I'm sorry if my voice seems hoarse. I don't know why it's hoarse. Maybe I need to keep myself hydrated, but let's just keep on going so this next book is i actually bought it a year ago it's called the passenger by john Mar Mars. mars so this book is actually supposed to be so this book is kind of like suicide squad if you've seen suicide squid squad this is kind of like uh the squid games like that show if you've seen it kind of like this but instead, in this, there's eight people and you have to decide who you want to save and who you want to kill. So there's random stranger, they're locked in a car and literally you have to decide who you want to save and who you want to kill. I don't know why this was on my TBR, but I do remember getting this book for a friend and she said it was really, really good. So I picked it up like a few weeks later and now it's been on my TBR for a while and I haven't picked it up. Again, I'm busy studying. So yeah, this is called The Passenger and I think it's interesting because it's at, the, at the top of the book, it literally says who live, who, d who dies, you decide. So it's kind of intriguing. In a sense, this next book, oh my god, I it's been on my TBR and I let it sit on my shelf for years. And I'm so ashamed it's just sitting on my shelf. I really, really, really want to read this book. But like I said, studying takes up a lot of time. And with my social life, which I'm even surprised I have one. It just, all these books that I want to read and that you will see, I just... Do not have time for it as much as I would love to read them. Now, this new book is Becoming by Michelle Obama. I She's an inspiration. Need I need to say more? She's an inspiration. I actually wanted to read this book for like so long, but I never had the chance to pick it, to pick it up on my shelf and read it. I don't know why, but... A lot of people actually really liked her book and I actually picked it up I think my second year of college and no way I'm sorry I'm sorry not my second year my first year and a half I picked it up and I never read it now I'm almost in my senior year so I need to read this sometime soon now the next book is actually recommended by a good friend like on Instagram. Her name is Minna. I'll put a link to her channel. I mean, she has a YouTube channel actually. She does have a YouTube channel. So I'll put her Instagram and YouTube in the description box down below. But if, if you guys know me, I'm a fan of Star Wars. You already saw the cover, sorry. So I love Anakin and Obi-Wan, their brotherhood thing, like their, their relationship as Padawan and Master and as brothers. So I picked up this book, Star Wars Brotherhood by Mike Sheen. Basically, just explained about the brotherhood, like the relationship as brothers, how they were. And it's during, set during the Clone Wars, I believe. So this is like sitting on my shelf waiting for me to pick it up and read. But literally, I will read this, these books. I want to read them this year. So we only have December left, we're in November, towards the end of November. And I want to keep reading them at my 2023 TBR list because my list is getting longer and longer now, but I need to finish these books first. So yeah, it talked about Star Wars, talked about Obi-Wan, Anakin, and the brother relationship. What more, what more do you want, really? But yeah, then I picked this one up. This, I picked it up before I went on my summer vacation. So like, 
I want to say two weeks before I went on my summer vacation, I picked this book up and I never even took it with me. I was going to, but I took the Vice Count Who Loved Me and I read like chunks of that over the summer, but I, I didn't take this one with me, which I think is a good thing because I was reading Vice Count Who Loved Me. The back is so beautiful too. So the next two books, I actually got them yesterday at Dollar Store. I know, right? Good books at Dollar Store. I don't think these people have heard of these books. Maybe you have, but you just never found interest. So I picked up Drive In by Melissa Stephenson. And I picked up Era of Ignition by Amber Tambly. So it's a coming of age in a time of rage and revolution. Both of these books are really, really good. If you, if anyone is a feminist that's watching, I would recommend this book. I picked it up literally yesterday, so it's a day old, but it's really, really good. And it talks about, like, feminine. Let me take a look real quick. Let me just take a look. So, in this deeply personal exploration of modern feminism, she addresses misogyny and discrimination, trauma, and the vile complexity of consent, white feminism, pay priority, reproductive rights and sexual assault all through the lens of her own experiences as well as those of her sisters in solitary. So basically it has some triggering stuff in it, so sexual assault and stuff. Don't read it if you're sensitive to that stuff but other than that if you find a girl this is the book for you. This drive-in is basically about a girl who longed for an escape. It's on the back and in automobile, she found the promise of a future from a lineage of secondhand family cars of the late 60s to the Honda that carried her from Montana to Texas as her new marriage is like destroyed to the 70s Ford she drove away from her brother's house after he, he took his life, leaving Melissa the truck, a dog, and a few mixed of tape to the VW van she now uses to take her kids camping. She knows these cars better than she knows some of the people closer to her. Driven through grief and towards hope, Melissa reckoned with what it means to lose a beloved sibling. So, basically, it's about this girl, Melissa, and she loses a sibling that's near and dear to her, but she also loves the cars, so she knows cars better than people. If you're interested in, like, 60s, 70s, 80s, this is six yeah, the 60s and 70s, but not the 80s, I'm sorry. The 60s and the 70s, this is the book for you. If you love cards, if you love what it means to lose somebody, not like love it, but like in a way that you know what grief is. You've lost somebody close, near, and dear to you, like a sibling, grandfather, grandmother, aunt, whatever. This book is for you. It's not very long. It's just, see? It's short. It's really good. I got these for like a dollar and 25 cents. That's the good bargain to begin with. Okay, the next two books that I actually want to talk about is actually one that I bought and one that my dad gave me. I'm going to go, I'm going to start with the one that my dad gave me. So it's called A Mind Unraveled. A True Story of Disease, Love, and Triumph by Kurt Inchewald. By Kurt Inchewald. So this is... I'm going to assume it's a memoir. Probably, but I don't think so. Okay, no, this is not a memoir. Sorry. I was reading the back because it doesn't have anything in the front. Okay, it's blank. So it's a story of a young man confronted by a... Del Depolating brain disorder who thought who through personal resilience and the support of loved one overcame medical incompetence and institutional discrimination to achieve one unthinkable success. So again, it has to go back to Deaf Utopia book. This is also good for anyone who is hoping to enter neurology, like a neurology field or any field, actually any doctor field, anything that had to do with the brain, the hearing. I recommend this one and Deaf Utopia. So A Mind Unraveled. I really, really am looking forward to reading this. This is intriguing. It doesn't seem like it can take me long to read because it's not that big and thick. 
So definitely want to read this as soon as I can because it's really interesting. Now the next one, you guys heard about this earlier in the year, but I didn't really get it until the summer, like before the summer, I want to say. So this is called The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. So basically it's about two girls who are twins. They are twins, inseparable children, ultimately chose to live in two very different worlds, one black, one white. So it's really, really interesting because you, I believe you see two different perspectives or maybe just one, but to see how they grow up as one black and one white. Yeah, because in two different worlds, the twins, inseparable children ultimately cho chose to live two very different worlds. And this is, this is actually named the best book of the year by the New York Times, the Washington Post, Vanity, NPR people, Vanity Fair, Glamour, The Vanishing Half. That's what it's called, The Vanishing Half. So this is really like... <laughs> so this has been on my TBR since the beginning of the year. I didn't get a chance to pick it up before I left for the summer, so... Like probably a month or a month and a half before I left for the summer, I picked it up. Or maybe when I came back, I don't remember you guys. It's, everything this year is so fuzzy. I was just like, I don't remember much. So yes, A Mind Unraveled and The Vanishing Half. So these two, really, I mean, for every single one of these books, I cannot wait to dive into it this winter break. Like literally, I want to dive into that. So the next is Colleen Hoover's books. Now, when everybody started talking about her, I was just like, what's all the hype about? So, like, I went to Target, I went to Walmart, I went to Books A Million, I went to Barnes & Noble, I went to Even Mojo's, and I saw her books over there, and a few of them really struck me out, so I just, I wanted them, like, so bad. There is a few that I still have on my TBR list. Excuse me. That I have on my TBR list, but I don't have them right now. I only have two. Now, the first one is the one that I bought, and it reminded of him by Colleen Hoover. Now, actually, I don't really know. Oh, okay. So this one is about the a girl that she go to prison and she loses custody of her daughter. And then when she gets out of prison, she tries to regain custody of her daughter, but everybody in her life tried to shut her out. And then this, this guy that comes into her life and he doesn't close the door on her. He doesn't shut her out like how everybody else does. I believe he gives her a job in his bar because he owns a bar. And... So she's trying to heal and try to get her back custody of her daughter. And this guy comes into his life. He gives her a job at the bar. And he actually is intrigued by her. And he actually wants to know more about her. They have this connection. But it's actually a dangerous connection. They're not supposed to have this connection. Because everybody would be like, why are they having this connection? So this was interesting because I actually really like the cover art of this. This is like a really beautiful cover art and that's what really draw me to the books, the cover art. Sometimes it can be a simple cover and it draws me. Sometimes it's, it's also the plot of the book. But this one just, it's a unique cover of like birds all over and the way that some of these letters are like like torn off. Not like torn off, but like the they're out like they're out of not out of place but like they're torn like it's like a paper ripped out so this was interesting pickup i still have not <laughs> even read this i'm telling you guys this semester is like very very busy for me so i have not had a chance to read this except for Deftopia because it's good for my major 
The next one is actually a gift from my friend Helena. Um, she knew I was eyeing this book along with many other ones and Confession is actually the one that I want so bad. And she actually, I can't believe she did this, but she got me the book Variety by Colleen Hoover. Again, this is more of a sci-fi, I think murder mystery kind of thing. No, it's not murder mystery. I think it's like a horror kind of thing. And... So I think this is about a woman who gets into an injury, like she had an accident or something. And then she thinks that her husband is going to leave her or something. Yeah, I don't really know what this book is about. All I know is that I heard that it was good and that it was like really, really amazing. I'm trying to read like on the back, you guys, and I can't even form my sentences properly. Yeah, I will. This is definitely interesting. I'm really interesting to read, to even find out. Again. Can we just adore the book cover art? Like, I love the. This is so captivating. 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 I can go on and on about the book cover. So, yeah, I have these two by Colleen Hoover. They have more on my TBR list, but God, am I going to even buy more? Maybe one more, and that's it. But other than that, these two are just all I have. For now. This is going to be a very, very long winter break. So I might as well just read books. So let's take a quick break. How are you? How's your day? Let me know in the comments down below. I went to class and came back. So it's been a good day. It's been a good day so far. Alhamdulillah. So the next two books are actually very different. Um... One I got yesterday, one I got today. Because <laughs> that's how I am. And the first one I want to start with is actually the one I'm most excited for. Actually, I'm excited for both of them. But I have heard so many good things about this book. And I heard one thing that's not good. Well, I mean, like, it's good. But it was just, like, it was, It didn't live up to the reader's expectation. But that's fine. I'm a different reader. So the first one is The Love Hypothesis by Ali, Ali, I don't know if they like it, Ali, Ali, Ali Hazelwood. And so this is about, this is a grumpy sunshine trope, but this is also about a professor who's grumpy. And this girl, she is a graduate student. She and her friend, well, her friend is dating somebody and her friend is like, you need to go out more, you need to meet guys, you need to go on dates, I barely see you doing anything. And she tries to convince her friend that she's like, I don't want to, but you know, like her friend sets her up on dates. And then one time in a lab, she was working and her friend came over and was like, why did you miss this? And she was like, oh, she was trying to escape the situation. She ended up grabbing the nearest guy that was close to her in the room and kissed him in front of her friend. And so that ended up being her professor, the grumpy professor <laughs> of her class, which is so funny because I'm just like, how, how can you just grab somebody? Anyway, so... Her friend thinks that she's dating her professor, which is not allowed. And so it's kind of like a fake dating trope thing, along with the grumpy sunshine. Because that's like so funny. How can you... It's funny, and I feel like there's a lot of good, funny books out there. But I feel like this is just funny how it works on its own. Now, the next one is... Also, really, really like, okay, see what I'm talking about? Simple yet elegant. I love it. So, this is the Spanish love deception. It's about a girl who needs a date to her sister's wedding, uh, especially because she lied about her American boyfriend and it spiraled out of control within her family. 
And so now everyone she knows, including her ex and his fiance, will be there and eager to meet the the white boy, like the white boyfriend. But the problem is that she only has four weeks to find someone that's willing to travel to the Atlantic and aid in this situation. Besides, New York to Spain is no short flight and her family won't be easily fooled. And so she actually asked her colleague who stepped in because... But here's the thing. She rather refused because she doesn't... He thinks that she thinks that he is aggravating, blood boiling, and unstuffable man. That they work together and it's so funny. And but she's desperate. And the closer the wedding comes, the more of an light side option he becomes. So she actually ends up uh, having him to the wedding, and um, I guess they kind of fall in love. I don't know yet, but yes. Yeah. This has been on my TBR for a long time. I heard really, really good things. So it's called The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. So pretending to be in love never felt better. <laughs> Which is funny because we all know what happens when you pretend. And then, yeah, I mean, this is, this is really like, I feel like it's going to be entertaining for sure. It's going to be really entertaining. So yes, these two, oh my god, am I even looking forward to them? Like, looking forward to reading them. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready for the last and final book of this video? I think the best for last, so... If you guys will please, yes. So I have gotten George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood. Again, I love how simple this is. I love the font colors. I love the three-headed dragons and the red. Please, I love it. And the illustrations in this book is so beautiful. Like, oh my god. My favorite, well, because I only saw one illustration. But my favorite is the one with Aegon and his wife. King Aegon the First and his wife. After they conquer. Bro, what are you? What are you pictures? It's somewhere in here. I'll put it on the screen because I. But this, I believe this book is beginning with the legendary Aegon the Conqueror, creator of the Iron Throne. This volume recounts the generation of Targaryens who fought to hold that iconic seat all the way up to the Dance of the Dragon, the bloody civil war that nearly put an end to Targaryen rule for good. So it's from Aegon the Conqueror all the way to the Dance of the Dragons after, and I believe after it finished. So this is definitely a thick book. It's a big book. So this is why I need to go through the other books and start reading this one during the winter, inshallah, during my winter break because it's, it's no small book. I mean, compared to the other one that... I, you even like imagine and this book is not easy it's like so heavy it's like heavy so yes fire and blood i actually got this this month earlier this month for my birthday it's like a small birthday treat to myself so i'm actually excited to dive in the illustration is just so beautiful in here like very beautiful i love the drawing they're so beautiful i don't know who that is but i don't I just, okay, this is just an example, but like, spoiler warning. This is, um, Vega and Amond. And then we have Lacurius and a dragon, Arax, on his name. Is that a dragon's name? Yeah, no, they don't mention, they don't mention his dragon's name. Yeah, they don't mention the dragon's name, which is sad because I, I don't remember the dragon's name. But the illustration is very beautiful, even though it's black and white. So beautiful. I love the illustration in this book. Who is that? It was a really beautiful illustration of Aegon the Conqueror and his wife. 
You only had two lives. Oh, here it is. I'm sure I just showed it on the screen. But I think the screen would be better because the lightning in here is terrible. But this is the illustration of Aegon, the first to conquer and his wives. But yeah, fire and blood. I am so ready to read this. I'm so ready. And there you have it. This is all the books that I actually really want to read. They have been on my, some of them have been on my TBR list for a while. Others have recently came in. So yeah, this is. This is the video. Okay, just let me know in the comments down below what books do you like to read? Like the genre and what are on your TBR list. So I would love to talk about that. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye. Like a shoot. Ah! For this hell.